Well, hello everybody. My name's Emily, um, and yes, some people call me an inventor, um, although some of the people call me a problem solver. I prefer the problem solver because I often speak in schools to young people. When I say the word inventor, they think about um, old men in sheds, a bit like Wallace and Gromit, which kind of offends me. Um, however, my story does start with an old man in my shed, and that's my granddad. Um, and at the age of four, my granddad gave me a hammer. And from then on, I used to spend hours with him in his shed at the bottom of his garden, watching as he'd take these scraps of materials and turn them into toys for me and my cousins. And I was absolutely fascinated by how creative he was, and I wanted to learn as much as possible. And my granddad used to help me take things apart, put things back together, um, and he really, really ignited this creative spark for me, which is something that I never, ever wanted to lose. Looking at my granddad's shed, um, you'll see some of the machinery and the tools that he'd collected over the years. You can see a pillar drill, um, a lathe. He had pretty much everything you'd find in a secondary school technology classroom. Um, and because I could use all this machinery and equipment before I started secondary school, I think when I got there, um, my passion and my talent that my granddad had instilled in me has um, kind of been able to be let loose. When I was 15, I was able to create um, my own brief, well, I was able to solve a problem um, that the teachers had given us. There were, there were three options, to design an elderly aid, to design a child's toy, or to design an item of storage. And for me, I wanted to create an elderly aid. I loved the idea of helping somebody with my inventions. Um, when, I was, when I was younger, I used to spend hours making stuff for myself, you know, the rounder sets, jewelry boxes, and it just felt kind of right to do something for somebody else. So I spent a day with my other granddad, and I simply watched what he could and, what he could and couldn't do. Um, he had arthritis in his hands, and the first thing I noticed was that he really struggled to squeeze um, a tube, and he couldn't get the toothpaste out of the tube. So I thought, well, you know, how can I go around and how can I solve um, this problem for my granddad? So I did quite a bit of research and looked at how people get toothpaste out of a tube now um, with the little... Um, with the little, you know, the Colgate, the whatever, the, the toothpaste shoes with, where you have to press your thumb on the top. Um, well, that was too difficult for my granddad. So I thought about um, looking at other products that are already on the market um, and just came up with this, which really, really simply is a toothpaste dispenser that my granddad could press with any part of his body. Um, he could press it with his arm, the lever with his arm, with his head, whatever he wanted to do, but he could get toothpaste out of a tube. And for me, this was a real success. You know, my granddad was able to use something that I'd thought up in, in the classroom and was able to make for him, and my granddad was able to use it. But I realized there wasn't just my granddad who had arthritis, there's lots of people who suffered. Um, and there were lots of people who struggled using um, both hands. And there's more than just toothpaste that comes in a tube. So my product actually had many other uses. However, unfortunately, at this point, I'd taken my product um, to a competition with the school and I'd had it on public display and actually lost all rights to my product, um, which was a real shame and something that I learned about uh, well, at that point about patenting and protecting products. So at that point, I'd kind of taken on board all the stuff that I'd learned, the fact that I actually had this real passion for using my creative ability to solve problems um, with not overcomplicated so uh, solutions just looking at everyday uh, problems and using that kind of innovative um, innovation and creativity that my granddad had kind of allowed me to explore when I was younger and put them into um, solving things that really help people. So I decided that um, moving on and going into my A-levels, I again wanted to solve um, a, a problem that people uh, had to deal with in day in and day out. So I started to think about um, people transporting water and I started thinking about how women and children had to transport water over long distances each day in, in parts of Africa, for example, to collect um, water either using one bucket of water on their heads or two buckets of water using a yoke on their shoulders. And I thought about how um, this journey was quite inefficient. And actually, if we could allow people to design a product that allowed them to transport more buckets of water, that would be a much more efficient journey. So what I did was start to look at um, look for inspiration. Now, I don't tend to think about, well, I, I don't like to really think about reinventing um, the wheel. I like to look at things that already exist. I like to look at things that already work and take inspiration from those um, products. So I looked at James Dyson's Ball Barrow, 
and I looked at how the ball um, allowed for a easier transportation over a rough terrain because of the larger surface area. So I thought about how I could create a wheel or a ball shape um, out of different thicknesses of tree branches. As you can see, this is just um, some wood from the classroom, but we were able to, I was thinking on a bigger picture out in Africa. Um, I also thought about the sustainability of the product, about how this product could be used in, um, or manufactured potentially in Africa. And at the end of that life cycle of the product, could, how could you um, reuse it? How could you replace broken bits? So I looked at pegs and the idea of securing um, the product as a whole, using materials that were naturally available um, in, or locally sourced, should I say, in parts of Southern Africa. So this is what I came up with initially. Um, and this is actually a child's version. And I know that sounds awful, um, the way I'm describing that. But often, um, as women have transported water for long periods of time, um, they actually end up with quite bad um, back problems. And so the children have to take time off school to go and collect water for mum. So I, I designed a, a child's version and an adult's version um, that could be manufactured locally um, in parts of Africa. Um, the way that it works is that you can push and pull um, the water carrier. If you're tall enough, you can transport up to five buckets, um, and you can take your buckets out, and you can transport firewoods and, and, and other um, products if you, if you want to. And again, it's just a really simple solution to a, a, a big problem. And what I realized was that this product could make a difference to people's lives, um, but I just needed to go out and work out how to distribute it. Luckily, I was able to be involved with some charities who really liked the idea and wanted to promote it on my behalf whilst I finished my final year at school. So going forward, then I thought about how I could then create another product to help people in my final year, um, building on from my toothpaste dispenser and my water carrier, um, what's, what's the biggest kind of impact I could have. And I'd listened to a speaker who spoke about global warming and climate change, and he said something that I would never, ever forget. He said, unless we start sharing kettles between our neighbours and TVs between our streets, we're going to have a huge crisis because we're consuming too many resources. And I thought that this was never, ever going to happen. I couldn't see a point. I couldn't imagine a point in our lives where we started sharing kettles um, between our neighbours and TVs between our streets. So I decided that I would take a product that we use every day in our homes and redesign it so it doesn't use electricity. So whether that was using renewable energy or used in whole new uh, type of en energy altogether. And so I looked at fridges. Um, I looked at fridges in their fridge mountains and how people just throw them away. And I thought about how I could redesign a refrigerator. It's something we have on in our homes every day. Um, and something that could potentially, well, would consume a lot of energy, but potentially um, could make a difference if we had a renewable version in our homes. So again, I looked for inspiration, um, and like I said, I don't try and invent something brand new. I like to look at what already exists. Um, so I looked at how our bodies sweat, um, obviously the evaporation technique. Um, I looked at the potting pot cooler um, that cools via, uh, with terracotta and, and adding water. I looked at the pros and cons of the, the zea pot, as it's called. I looked at um, air conditioning units. I looked at refrigerators now. And what I realized was that actually I could take a lot of this a lot of knowledge that we already have and design something quite um, simple. So I came up with this that looks kind of a bit like a toilet roll holder or a bird feeder, as people say. But it's actually a really simple, um, sustainable fridge. Now, the way it works is it basically uses evaporation and heat transfer, but it allows you to cool using dirty water. So the Zia pot, which is used in parts of India and Africa, um, use it has to use clean water because the terracotta in a cylinder um, allows for the, obviously, the, it's porous, so it allows the water to come into contamination with whatever you're trying to keep cool. So I just thought of adapting that further, um, creating a hygienic, um, more kind of sustainable product that we could have in our homes um, that could potentially showcase the idea of sustainable living. Um, but obviously, we're not going to have this in our homes. We're not going to replace this, uh, our fridges with this. Uh, something you have to top up every day. Um, so I guess in some way I kind of failed. Um, and it was the first time that my, my product hadn't really done what I wanted it to do. And, and I was, I think, well, I was really disappointed, actually. I, was, I really thought that I could maybe um, create something that was for use in our homes. But what I realized was that I need to look at how this product could 
where it could work and how it could make a difference. And you know, I initially thought, well, kind of almost straight away thought about how this product could be used in Africa. Um, looking at this fridge here, this guy is able to keep beer cool using a potato sack and dirty water. So you can put this fridge um, out in a warm environment, the water evaporates and the, um, the beer becomes cool through the evaporation, just as when we sweat, as we become cool. The water evaporates, taking the heat from our body. Um, and to me, it just seemed a real shame that these people were able to keep beer cool, but were unable to keep um, fresh meat and medicine cool because of the fact that the beer is in a bottle and obviously it doesn't, the water doesn't come into contamination with the, um, with the product. So I decided that at the end of my A-levels, I actually wanted to go out there to Africa and I wanted to go and test my water carrier in my, my fridge. I was so passionate about my products. I really wanted to see how I could change them, how I could, how I could embed or how I could introduce them to these people's lives. Um, so before I started university, I took a gap year and I traveled out to Africa. Um, and first of all, well, actually, very first of all, because I was only 18, I had to kind of go and do some volunteer work to make sure my mum and dad were happy with what I was doing. But after the end of that, I then um, went and lived in a township in Namibia. And I really wanted to immerse myself in their way of living the people's um, lives. So at first, I um, simply watched what people did on a daily basis to refrigerate. So the, I saw very many similar things to the fridge I showed you before. Um, but I also looked at what people kept cool or needed to keep cool. Um, this woman bought fish in bulk. It was much cheaper that way. And the only way she could keep it um, for longer was to dry it on washing lines. Now, I then spent a lot of time trying to understand if this product could be built. My fridge was obviously made of aluminium. Um, that was my initial idea for when it was going to be used in our homes. But I wanted to look at locally sourced materials. So I worked with skilled workmen um, to really understand what was available, what skills they had. And actually, what I realized was that we could work together as a team to create a really simple fridge that used um, materials that were literally scraps. So we could use water barrels, old oil drums, um, and people could build my fridges. And actually, after spending time with, with skilled women and men who, um, um, well, skilled men and, and skilled women, actually the people who could build my fridges were women who were unemployed, um, women who had to stay at home with their fam uh, children during the day. So what I did was spend time working with women um, across Southern Africa um, over a period of time, um, teaching them to build my fridges, allowing them to set up their own businesses where they could make money for themselves and their families. Um, I would work with women who would become ambassadors for my projects, who would go out and tell um, other women and other people about how my fridges work. And the idea just spread. And, and now I can really say, you know, from a, from a school project, really, because that's what it was, I've been able to change the lives of many people by teaching a skill um, and knowledge and sharing that and kind of, in some sense, giving away an idea, which some people think is crazy, but actually there's nothing more rewarding than seeing people building my products and using them day in, day out. And as an inventor, that's the most satisfying thing you can have, in, in my opinion. So um, just to summarize my approach to design, I identify real-world problems. Um, that's, that's just the way I'd, I like to do it. I look for what's needed. Um, I, like to see, I like to see things that are going on and, and think how I can create products to solve that problem. Um, I really think about a back-to-basics approach. I don't like overcomplicated technology. Sometimes I just think the most simple um, solutions are the best. And in looking at other um, things that exist, other, other ways in which um, other solutions that have already been brought about by people and using those to solve it. And um, finally, explore a dual purpose. So obviously, I'd originally designed my fridge for the homes in the UK. I then um, took it out to Africa. And now my fridge um, can be used for camping. People are looking at using it for here in the UK in summer. It can be used for boats. Um, so there's quite a lot of different, of, of different purposes for my products. And I, I, really, I just really enjoy um, what I do on a, on a daily basis. So thank you very much. I hope you've enjoyed my talk. And I'd love to take any questions.